Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to the Winter Season Showdowns where you're currently watching a best of five between Sen and Moonglade. Before we proceed into game number four, I urge you, if you're attending the Winter Championship event, first of all, attend the Winter Championship event. It's in Dallas, Texas. It's on March 15th. You can still book your plane tickets, I promise. They might be a little bit pricier versus if you booked it a month ago, but you can still do it and you can save some money by purchasing your pass online right now. It's going to be 15 bucks off versus if you purchase it at the door so definitely take advantage of that and that being said i think we shall proceed on into game number four let's get right to it this is uh match point here if sen wins this of course he's going to uh he's going to take the series three to one moonglade's got to win this map and the next one to to take the series of course here we are into game four and as you said a very important match for these two Gentlemen, in the top left hand location, we have the Blue Zerclair, who is currently down two to one. He has some work to do. He must win two in a row. Can he do it? He is Moonclay. His opponent in the bottom right hand location. He's one win away from getting that spot at the Winter Championships in Dallas, Texas. He is from Team Gamma Bears, representing Taiwan. He is Sen. And by the way, I know there are plenty of Taiwanese individuals watching and Australians watching, urging, uh, rooting for their, their two players. So definitely make your voice heard. You can tweet at us, at AxelToss, at ISAxelab. You can make your voice heard in the chat. You can uh, go to Team Liquid and say, go Australia or go Taiwan. I want to hear your voices. Get on Reddit, get on Team Liquid, join that conversation and uh, root for your favorite players because this is a spectacular match so far and I have a feeling it's only going to get better. Moonglade always delivers. Yes. I've, I've like almost that's never so seen a, a Moonglade series that's not spectacular. Like so wh whether he wins or loses, it's always a good showing. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's some players who, who are insanely good and, and maybe even better than Moonglade, but when they win or lose, it's, it's, it's not always a great show. Moonglade always has a great show his strategies yeah. are well thought out uh his you know he, he doesn't he doesn't lose because of making really silly mistakes and, and he generally doesn't win by hoping his opponent makes a silly mistake so yeah. it's always something really really well thought out it's always a, a, a game of pure skill with this guy if moonglade makes a post on reddit he will deliver this uh, is true unlike maybe um who's that zerk player ostergy <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a that's an inside joke there for you reddit users out there um yeah so I'm very excited to see what happens here. Of course, Moonglade opening up with a bit of an... No, a later gas than his yes. opponent. Looks like Sen went for an earlier gas. He's got about 70, uh, 70 gas later, if you measure by the amount of extra gas Sen mine, which, of course, uh, is going to give Sen an earlier speed by roughly about 40 seconds or so, or maybe 30 seconds, something like that. Uh, and, you know, that, that can play a difference because... Uh, it, well, even... I mean, Sen's unlikely to go for some crazy speeding all-in. Um, so it won't play a difference as far as him being able to kill his opponent. But if Sen can realize Moonglade's getting later speed, that means what Sen can do is delay his building nest and delay his spine crawler. Unfortunately for Sen, he hasn't quite figured that out yet. Of course, it's very hard to, to know it all because the overall can't get in there and scout. Uh, so his building nest is actually earlier, so it's almost uh, not quite what he wants. But he will get in here. Uh, he will see that, that the speed is... Well, actually, uh, he can only tell by looking at the gas speed mine, I guess. He has to, he has to, and his Zergings have been... Pushed away to the right side of the base, so they're unable to see that gas quite yet. In fact, just got oh, now I'm gonna start right. Maybe he's getting a drone kill. Uh, no, nope, not quite. That drone. Uh, Turn it, it to his spine. Yeah, and it also it gets uh, it gets scratched up a bit. Says I don't wanna. I don't want to stay hurt. I don't want to deal with life as an injured drone. Yes. I will turn myself into a spine crawler, a much more superior thing than a drone. One might say. Yeah, it's like if you start chopping a tree down, you might as well finish it and turn it into a table. You don't want to yes, leave it as a hurt. That's is a, is a damaged tree. That's how it is. It's exactly. It's it's uh, you know Zerg or drones and drones and trees are fairly similar. They to are be turned into uh, more valuable objects. Great analogy there, Mr. Axlav. Very very nice indeed. Both players going for the lair. Yep. Sen adding three more gases. Moonglade adding three more gases as well. Uh, no evil chambers from both players, which means they're most likely going for Mutus. A layer is like a coffee table. Yes. Is it? Yeah, hatchery, hatchery is uh, 
turn it into table. lumber. When you turn a tree into lumber, right. and then you you refine the lumber, uh, construct a coffee table. Nice. I like these analogies. Um, yeah. So both going for layer, undoubtedly probably gonna be mutas. Both these guys. Hey. Or gases, layer. One Every of the chamber. cool things about Mewless Mirror is uh -huh. uh, it's actually sometimes not as much about the Mewless as it is about the speedling and baby play. Uh, because while you're trying to, like, you, you, you make drones on two base saturation, but then there's that zone when you're on, you got your two bases saturated, and you've got some extra minerals now, and that's what you spend on the speedlings. And the speedlings determine if one player, if none players, or if both players can get up a third base and defend it. So it's all about the third. It is. It's, it's all because that's the fifth and sixth gases. Mm -hmm. uh, we can see now both players are pretty much going to stop droning for now. Uh, Sen started his third base. Moonglade, he's got a drone on the way, about to start up his third base as well. And so now it's going to come into a game of who can defend their third. He's up in uh, Zerglings here, 14 to 1 at the oh. moment. Two Banelings being made. Sen's going defensive mode oh with God. spines and Banelings, but that's that's not going to help his third hatchery. No, it's not. And it's going to have to be canceled here. There's there's no way he can defend against these these links from taking that down. And there is the cancel, even losing the drone. Uh, Banelings coming back here from Sen, though. Oh, <laughs> one Zergling throwing efficient. himself at the Baneling. Oh, another one. Two Zerglings going to take out. Got him. Great micro by Moonglade here, and uh, he I mean, momentum. yeah, since trying to morph two more bandits, that's not going to work. Moonglade's just going to focus those down without a problem, and, and Sense is, Moonglade's just all over the map control. He's going to go deny his third base yet again. Meanwhile, uh, the base of his own is, is about 70% of the way done. Sen is going to have something to say about this, saying, all right, I'm not going to be able to get my third up in a good amount of time. I'm going to try to delay his as long as possible, but Moonglade, Knowing this is going to retreat Zerglings of his own, so I think he should be able to uh, allow this to finish. And Zen is going to be in a bit of a bind as far as getting that third on the ground. More and more Zerglings rallying across the map by Sen, but uh, Moonglades are all in one place. They get the jump on Sen. Sen loses several Zerglings before the battle even joins. Great micro by Moonglade pulling back the weakened group of Zerglings and engaging with the with the superior group. And again, he takes another uh, small victory. Yeah, and he, again, his third is up. Needs to get that gas right away. Uh, and of course, he needs to continue focusing on denying his opponent's third. But I don't know if that's possible anymore considering those mutas are out. And if you ever attack across the map with mutas, you always have to be cautious of, okay, my opponent, if he's going mutas, probably is going to have the defender's advantage because rallying those mutas, they're going to come out much quickly, uh, much more quickly. And Moonglade knows about it. Overlord just died. To yep. Mutas, so. Both players doing a little bit of overlord hunting, making sure that only overlords on their side of the map are the friendly overlords of their own faction. Another difference going down here, besides the, the little bit stronger early game by, by Moonglade, is the fact that Moonglade's getting Mutus armor, Sen's getting Mutus attack. Now, uh, if you're trying to harass and mostly kill drones, attack is superior. But in Mutus mirror situation, the armor is vastly superior as it takes one damage off every single one of the Mutus bounces. The attack only adds one damage to the first bounce, and it adds like a third of a damage and a ninth of damage to the second and third bounce. And so armor is much, much more superior in a straight on engagement. Once both those upgrades finish, even if they have equal numbers of Mewless, Mew Moonglade will go come up ahead in the battle. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, of course, uh, eventually Sen should decide to research uh, that carapace, but uh, you know there, there's going to be a timing there from Moonglade where his Mewless are going to be superior. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that and, and look for those Mutalisk versus Mutalisk um, battles. Now, I'm wondering if either player is going to try to get an Infestation Pit down, because like logically you want to get the Fungals out and then your Mutas can, can get a nice engagement. But again, you're going to be spending gas on Investors rather than more Mutas, which I don't it know if either player is, is likely to do that kind of a thing. Yeah, and it's one of those situations where you build the Infestation Pit, you get passage Glands, that's 300 gas, you queue up four Infestors, that's another 600 gas. Yeah. They have nine more mutas than you, and if they hit you right then before your infestors pop, you could lose a base. Uh, and then if you, I mean, once it just steamrolls down, so it's 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 tricky to do the transition. You're gonna have to build spores while you're transitioning, and then you give up map control. And, and players really they like map control, man. Sen actually added on a corruptor in there. He did. And that's gonna uh, if he can get that to tank the damage, it's gonna be nice. Of course, yeah. corruptors don't do very much damage output, but they're very tough to kill. So if you can get their mutas to focus on your corruptor, it'll take a lot of the hits for you. All right, Sen is going to be approaching this fourth base over here, the top side of the map. He's going to try to can get that to cancel. Might even kill it if it completes here. Uh, but nope, being very safe. Going to be backing away immediately. Also has a Zergling squad lurking on the left-hand side. So we might have some multi-prong harassment incoming from Sen. Sen really try it wants to get some damage done because he knows his opponent has that fourth base now. But he's he's wary of having his Mewless uh, get stuck and cornered because uh, Mewless can out 
if, if both Mutas are close to each other, they can kind of stutter step forward to Mutas and pick off a couple years while you try to retreat. All right, we have Lings running into the third base. Mutas running into the fourth. Lings versus Ling happening here, but Sen get a back way. Meanwhile, the Mutas is going to be attacking into the third. It's going to be retreating, it seems, there from the blue Mutas block. Sen is going to take advantage again by sending in the slings to the natural expansion, and this is just going to keep happening. Sen is just going to try to dip and dodge and try to take Moonblade off guard. Oh, the Zerg is getting a natural, doing good damage. Again, trying to hit the fourth of the Mutilus, but Moonblade is defending well at the fourth. Bonnie trying to reestablish re his defense at his natural. Some drones went down, and I think Sense is fairly happy with the way that went, but Moonblade's got to be happy too because his fourth is still up and running. Yeah, fourth is still up. Unis loss is uh, in, in Moonblade's favor by about 1,200. Income tab is 59 to 51 in favor of Moonglade, and yes, his fourth base is already done. Gas already mining. Meanwhile, Sense's fourth base is just now beginning, so Moonblade is going to have that supply advantage, 181 to 151. He has the income advantage as well, especially when gas is concerned. And both these players still adding on nothing but mutas. We're at 34 to 42 mutas in favor of Moonglade. Oh my god. One thing that's very important to note though is Moonglade, he stopped upgrading. He only has one carapace. Oh. Sen has continued his upgrading throughout this game. He's got one attack, he's got one carapace. And he's working on a second carapace. So just now, Moonglade's going to try to catch up in upgrades, but he's already behind by a full upgrade. I wonder if it's worth adding a second Spire. Uh, I mean, like as long like, as you, you keep rather continuing use that with your yeah. first, you should be able to get the, the sure. you know... Uh, well, at this point, yeah. like maybe you're like, oh man, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. Uh, oh, let me level to the base race situation here. Yeah, Moonglade going to be attacking into his opponent's fourth base. Meanwhile, Sen attacking into his opponent's third. We see... Uh, we see Moonglade retreating as fast as possible to potentially deal with this, and now Muta's going to be attacking the natural Moonglade, targeting down the hatchery, Transfuse going down, but Moonglade definitely caught off guard here, trying to retreat, but if he can catch all these Mutas, that could be huge, he's going to try to engage Muta versus Muta, I'm going to try to commentate this, but honestly, you see it on your screen there, they're attacking each other uh, as fast as they can, and Moonglade's going to sweep up Sen, no problem whatsoever, who cares about upgrades? Uh, uh, it's, it's just Sen's a matter of math, away. I mean... Yeah. Uh, the upgrades maybe make your mutas a little bit more effective, but Moonglade had so many more than his opponent. He got him cornered. Sen was playing, uh, you know, kind of loose and fast in this all game, trying to be on the offensive, trying to do damage. Moonglade finally pinned him down, caught him, and punished him for his, uh, I guess you could say, his bravery in crossing the map, his, his audaciousness. Yeah, he's going to try again. The mutas and there's a corrupter mixed in here, but Moonglade up 167 to 85 supply. He's going to have way too much. And Moonblade is going to take game number four, which means we're tied 2-2. Two to two. Wow, 2-2, two, to two, two Zerg Titans clashing here. Both big fan favorites. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, it's... It, I'm really looking forward to game five. I mean, game four was, was beautiful. Moonblade there was just a better early game usage of the speedlings. Set himself up ahead with the faster third, which in turn gave more minerals to get the faster fourth. Yep. And all of it combined meant a lot more mutas, and you know what? More mutas beats less mutas. The fourth never actually uh, finished there. And then also Sen was trying to go into Infestors. His Infestation Pit was completed, uh, but was unable to ever get any of those on the field. So Moonglade making those mutas, was loving them, and he was able to convert himself a victory in game number four. He's going to tie up the series two to two, which means coming up next, it is game five between Moonglade and Sen. The winner goes to Dallas. Stay tuned.